to think that I've fallen so low. It truly breaks my heart. But soon, it will be time to bid my sorrow farewell. When I have the power to overtake this entire island and be completely in control of it for the rest of my life, the Crown Tundra DLC is mwah, a fantastic addition to Pokemon Sword and Shield. The map feels well utilized, the characters are fun to interact with, and there are multiple side quests that let you feel like there's a lot to do. Add in the massive number of obtainable legendaries, and you have a time sink that's going to keep even Pokemon collectors entertained for a good while. Calyrex is the newest addition to the roster of legendary Pokemon available to catch in the mainline series of Pokemon games. This video is going to be a little bit ridiculous on purpose though. We're going to focus on Calyrex's role in the lore of this game, and what could have been. I want to move away from the storyline of the Crown Tundra and ask, could Calyrex take over a modern day Galar? There's going to be spoilers related to the DLC, so please be wary if you haven't completed the Crown Tundra. I'm gonna give you one more chance. All right, so, Calyrex. We learned quite a bit about Calyrex during the Crown Tundra DLC, but honestly, it, it begs the question. If Calyrex used to be the ruler of the Gala region in the past, what stops him from doing it again? Minus the fact that we capture him at the end of the DLC storyline. <laughs> With a base special attack of 165 while in Shadow Rider form, and a base physical attack of 165 in Ice Rider form, Calyrex is powerful enough to sweep your team if you aren't properly prepared to fight him. I used my base game team, which was leveled up only from post-game side quests and the Isle of Armor, which is probably what you'd expect someone to use if they're playing the DLC directly after being the main game. By doing this, my first try didn't, didn't do too great. <laughs> Don't kill me in one hit, okay? Don't do it. 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 Oh. Well guys, PK Love is always able to stand up to every single problem that ever happens in the game. It's definitely not going to kill us with uh <laughs> with its very powerful moves. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. So um if you can't tell, we might have a little bit of an issue on our hands here. So you know what we're going to do is we're going to give Calrix the benefit of the doubt and we're just going to have a nice a nice calm thoughts about this whole entire experience and then die in peace. Ice is easier to catch because it's, 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 uh, it's slow and not dummy fast. Ah, imagine you're in this long fight and then you remember, oh wait, I have this. Let's say, for the sake of this argument, we didn't capture Calyrex. Could a less benevolent Calyrex have ran off and tried to recontrol the entire Galar region? Calyrex wouldn't be the first Pokemon to exist that's impossible to catch with a Pokeball. After all, Galar's gimmick is all about max raid Pokemon that need to utilize special Pokeball mechanics to be captured. Calyrex isn't a Dynamax Pokemon, but in your first fight with Calyrex, you're not even allowed to capture it. The game is basically telling you that throwing a Pokeball won't work in this fight. In this fight, Calyrex is in its most weakened state directly after you see it for the first time. If Calyrex can withstand being captured then, you have to wonder, what if Calyrex had that sheer willpower to not get captured even after it reaches its final form? Even while weak, one of the first things that we see Calyrex do is control Peony as a way of talking to you through its psychic abilities. We never see the extent of Calyrex's psychic abilities after it's fused back with Glastrier or Spectrier, but we know that Calyrex doesn't lose its psychic type. Calyrex does lose its grass typing, but the Pokedex entry does confirm that it still can grow plants even while fused with the seed. And in fact, it can make those plants much better than it could before based on the earlier events of the game. To tame Glastrier and Spectrier, Calyrex needs to use the Reins of Unity to share a connection, and in doing so, Calyrex gets a huge power boost as well. When you think about it, all of the events in the Crown Tundra pretty much revolve around us, the player, working to make Calyrex more powerful again. So, what if, when he becomes even more powerful, Calyrex is able to control more than one person at a time? We know that Calyrex's power comes in part from how much people believe in its existence. Does fear count? If Calyrex obtained so much power that it was feared and known by all, how powerful would Calyrex be? If it was controlling the willpower of the people around it, could Calyrex just force people to believe in it in such a way that fed it into an almost ever-growing strength and power cycle? In the Crown Tundra, 
Kaurik's only grow stronger after we take the time to verbally affirm with the people of the village they at least know that Kaurik's exists. Would just controlling the people of the Galar region and having them talk about Kaurik's nearby be enough to keep this cycle going? Imagine a power-hungry Kaurix brought back into existence through the events of Sword and Shield, who is more bitter than the Kaurix that we interact with in the events of the Crown Tundra. A Kaurix who doesn't want to risk being forgot again now that it's finally returned after who knows how many years have gone by. After all, the stories in the mayor's office make it pretty clear once again that Kaurix was slowly forgotten by the people of the time. The first book talks about Kaurix in great detail, but by the end, the villagers don't even know what Kaurix is supposed to look like. When you look at its Pokedex entries, it seems like Kaurix could be really powerful. The Ice Rider entry in Pokemon Sword claims, According to lore, this Pokemon showed no mercy to those who got in its way, yet it would heal its opponent's wounds after battle. Now, the no mercy line makes me really think, Maybe a Kaurix consumed by a desire to only become stronger might take control of its steed and instead work to slowly turn the land into its kingdom once again. This is just starting to sound like a creepypasta and I'm just having a really good time thinking about it. <laughs> In fact, let's let the live stream version of myself explain exactly how I feel this might go. I will ask but once more. Are you sure this is the field that you want to plant the seeds? Yes. Very well. I ask that you plant the seeds. And thus, Vikvion planted the seeds, slowly planting the seeds of her own demise. <gasps> As the seeds grew down into the dirt, Calryx felt his power begin to grow. Ha, 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 ha. You hear a sound from behind you. It sounds like... A horse is on its way. You plant the carrot seeds in the field. You feel yourself slowly being overtaken by an aura. Oh my god. It is a deer riding a horse. And you, you're floating right beside them. You have no control over your body. Oh my god, your guys are going into the town. Oh my god, it's too late. You've become part of Calryx's horde. You eat only carrots for the rest of your life, but you know it no better. Pat, pat. You pat the head of Calryx. Your loyal king. Your undeniable leader. Ha ha ha. Very good. Very good, Calryx says, knowing that it has a complete hold over you and everyone in the town. Like, one of the Pokedex entries in Sword and Shield even claims that Calyrex is able to see time in the present, the past, and the future. If a Pokemon is able to predict time with that much certainty, would Calyrex always be one step ahead of trainers or anything else that tries to get in its way? <laughs> What's that? You want an unnecessarily specific example? Calrix predicts that someone from a separate region is gonna give obligatory rock climber NPC number 7 a phone call in the afternoon. The call is supposed to be to check in on them because there's been a missing persons case filed about their whereabouts. But actually, it's a sting operation from the Kalos government trying to figure out what the heck happened in Galar. There hasn't been a contact from a single Galarian in weeks. The phone rings. No one answers. They travel by a flying Pokemon over to the Galar region and start to investigate further. As soon as that person lands on Galarian soil, they feel a strange presence nearby. Calrix appears. It looks at the flying Pokemon that was aiding the human in the eyes and tells that Pokemon that Galar is a region where everyone can be free. The Pokemon complies and leaves their human companion. After that, Calrix overtakes that person, and boom. Another operation has failed. Calrix only grows stronger. Like, imagine if Calrix could take control of, like, anyone who crosses over the region. It's just, it's so stupid. It's just great to think about. It would never happen, but, like... Okay, okay, okay. Calrix isn't the first or the last Pokemon to have such, like, untapped lore potential. But here, you can laugh about Calrix and how powerful he may or may not actually be. <laughs> Thank you for watching, and I hope that all of you are out there enjoying the Crown Tundra. Leave a comment below if you have your own thoughts about Calyrex, or maybe even other legendary Pokemon that could, at their full potential, break the rules of the Pokemon universe with ease.
It truly feels like real DLC when you're playing the Crown Tundra, and I'm just glad that so many people feel the same way as I do about it. Thank you for listening, and see you later!